Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I have a great run of Avengers in front of me. Now, this weekend, Avengers Infinity War came out, and I'm looking at Avengers Infinity War, and I'm looking at the movie before that, which is Age of Ultron, and I'm saying to myself, these stories are not the stories from the Age of Ultron. These stories are not the stories from the Infinity Gauntlet or from Infinity War. Those stories concentrate a lot more on things that are not in these movies. So I'm wondering, where do these two movies come from? Are they completely original works? When I look at this great run I have in front of me today, I can tell you right now that they are not original works. They come from a very great, if not the best, run of Avengers in all of their history. And it comes from a run that goes from number 161 to 177. It ends in the culmination of the greatest battle that you will see with the Avengers, and that is the battle with Korvac. Now, if you're looking at the picture in front of you, you'll just look really quickly at the number of Avengers that are on this page, and they're not even all on this page. You have Quicksilver, you have Hercules, you have Black Widow, you have Scarlet Witch, you have Starhawk, who is one of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and the rest of the Guardians of the Galaxy are in this book, but not in this picture. You have Captain America down in the corner, you have Iron Man, you have the Vision, you have Hawkeye, you have Thor, you have Wonder Man, you have Moon Dragon, you have Captain Marvel, you have Miss Marvel, and you have Black Panther. And also flying in, very small, you have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, that sounds like a really good summary of the Avengers as they are in the movie that is coming out this weekend, which is Infinity War. And this, I do believe, is the origin of that story here with the battle with Korvac. Now, to go back slightly to tell you about this great run, I don't think it only includes this movie. I think it includes The Age of Ultron. We'll go back a little bit farther, even before number 161, and talk about this great run of Avengers. I'll give you a couple of different pictures here just to set the stage, just to show you these mental images which just seem to pop up in the movies. You have this picture right here of the city being taken out of the earth from issue number 158. You have this picture, which is a picture of where Hawkeye is in issue number 161, which is a ranch, which is a little reminiscent of where he is in the Avengers movies. You also have... In previous issues, number 135, you have the culmination issue of the retelling of the story of the creation of the Vision, which is an Ultron story. So all of these things add up really quickly when you're looking at these books and this great run of Avengers. Now, I think that this great run starts with number 161 and ends in number 177. Why do I think it starts in number 161? Because there is a rebuilding of the Avengers team. Prior to 161, there are a lot of different characters that come in and out, and there are a lot of characters which a lot of people, if you're only familiar with the MCU, wouldn't even know about, like the Swordsman. But in issue number 161, there is a rebuilding of the Avengers, and this is the Avengers team which you're seeing in the movies right now. In issue number 161, you have The Return of the Ant-Man. Prior to that, he had been Yellow Jacket. Prior to that, he had been Giant Man and had a number of different incarnations. But in number 161, he returns to being the Ant-Man, and he has also lost his memory in this issue and is wondering where the original Avengers are. It is also an Ultron story and continues into number 162, which is another Ultron story. Again, I see very clearly this culmination of Ultron stories as being the real drive behind the Age of Ultron movie. Now, in number 163, you have an old team which is entering into the picture, which is the Champions, and in the Champions, you have Black Widow. Now, there's a couple of filler issues between 163 and the next one, which is 167. In 167, you have the entrance of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and you have the first in this run, the first notice of Korvac. And then number 170 through 171, you have another Ultron story. In number 172, you have the return of Hawkeye. In number 173, you have Black Widow, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel all coming into the Avengers. In number 174, you have an issue 
with the Collector in it, who is in the new movie, and he also talks about the coming of Thanos. And then in number 175 through 177, you have the story arc for Korvac. And it's very easy to see in Korvac a substitute for Thanos, or to put it a different way, you can see that if when you recognize that this great run of Avengers is the run of Avengers that these last two movies have been written from, you can see that Thanos in the movies is just a substitute for Korvac. Korvac in these issues has what is described as almost ultimate power. He, if you look at this picture here, he is ready to take on all of Asgard, all all the gods at once. He is ready to take on Odin and Zeus and Mephisto all together. He has the attention of eternity, which is the embodiment of the universe itself. He has ultimate power. And Horvak really is just has just been substituted in this storyline for Thanos so that they can bring in that new audience, the, the audience from the original Infinity War the audience that bought all of those and that knows this story and that is still following Thanos and his story now. The substitute of Korvac for Thanos is just to bring in that audience, but the original storyline comes from this run. And not only is it a great run because of the Avengers that you see in it, because of this collection of heroes along with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but you have these stories written by James Shooter and the first art some of the first art, anyways, of George Perez. And it is beautiful, beautiful art. George Perez, anyone who knows the art of George Perez will see nothing but perfection in most of what he does for a comic artist. I see him as the greatest comic artist that there is. Others try to imitate him. Others have different styles, but no one comes close to George Perez. So... Unlike my other videos, I'm not going to go into the story, go into the, how the story is constructed or the art or any of that other stuff. For this, I am just setting before you this great collection of Avengers stories. You should go and find it, especially if you are very much looking for an extension, an idea of where these stories come from, from the MCU. Go back to these issues, 161 through 177 of the Avengers. You can probably find them in your store for about $15 a piece. And I know that they did a trade paperback of the Korvac saga not too long ago, if you wanted to pick that up, and it will make sure that it just has those stories in it, which are the relevant ones, and taking out a few of these filler issues that are in this great run. But still, what I wanted to say here is, number one, this is a great run of Avengers. If you're looking for a great run of Avengers, go and pick this up. Go and find it. Go and read it. You won't be disappointed. But the other thing that I wanted to bring up was the fact that I find it really funny, really, really funny, that it seems obvious to me that this run of Avengers is where the last two Avengers movies have come from, where they have gotten their inspiration from. It is very clear to me that that is the case. And if that is the case, the funny thing is that these stories are from 1977 and 1978. In order to appeal to a mass audience, in order to take these great characters and put them in movies that will appeal to people, not just comic fans, but a lot of people, they have to go back to stories from 1977 and 1978. Not to say that the 80s and the 90s didn't have great stories, but by the time the 80s and the 90s had come around, Comics were very specialized, and they had already started ramping up their event ideas and crossovers, and you had to know this story and that story and backstory and everything else. And this is for the comic collector who knows all of these things, these stories in the 1980s and 1990s. To jump in at that point is not very easy to do. So in order to take these characters, which will appeal to, to a mass audience, the people who write the movies have to go back to 1977 and 1978. And that, I think, is a commentary on the sad state of comics that we have today. They certainly can't take the stories which are being put out today and try to make them appeal to a mass audience because 
Not only do they not appeal to a mass audience, they no longer even appeal to the comic book audience that was built up in the 1980s, 1990s, 2000s. Those people are being driven away. And I think this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, is because I want to read comics again, and I want to enjoy comics again. And what I'm left with doing is to go back into my collection and find great runs of comics, to go back into the back section of my comic store and find the ones that I am missing. These are great stories. These are the kinds of stories, these are the kinds of writing and art that we should be demanding as comic fans and have them put out today because these are the stories we deserve. These are great comics. So, until I see you in the next video, as always, make comics better by reading better comics. And I can say quite definitely that this run of Avengers, they are better comics. All right, I'll see you later.